Hello and welcome to this week's look at action and stunts on film and television. How are you? Welcome. You've done another week. You've managed to get through fair play to you. Crack open a bottle, a glass, a can of whatever your favourite beverage is and uh, sit back and relax and we'll have a little look at something a bit exciting. Um, this is in connection with our podcast where we were looking, if you remember, regarding stunt coordinators. You need a ground level qualification. We have that here with the British Stunt Register. They have a system in place, but America has talks of a system, but it isn't active and stunt coordinator Tony Snegoff was questioning that, and rightly so. He was making many valid points in connection with, well, you know, are we qualified if uh, it turns out that subsequently there is a SAG-AFRA option which entitles certain individuals on, but people like, for instance, and I'll use his name uh, because it's been used previously in this in this regard take a stuntman like terry leonard stunt coordinator who is responsible not only for performing some of the most incredible action sequences and stunts but also directing them as a second unit director and arranging them as a stunt coordinator because of his situation where it stands currently he doesn't fall in line with these particular criteria and therefore wouldn't be eligible i know um so you know things need to be looked at certainly and there is maybe um a way in which the british system can pass on some of the knowledge and some of the the work in which they've created to to put together this extraordinary system that they have here and 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 use it around the world and the rest of the world can take it new zealand i know have one New Zealand have taken something on board and they have done that. So, in connection with Tony, you will remember that I mentioned about Lethal Weapon. He, he, he was working on Lethal Weapon and a gag that really, and I use the phrase myself, nearly killed him. And he will vouch for that, I dare say, because uh, what you're about to see is a look at that gag and probably what should have happened... And what actually happened? Um, the take in the movie is a very different take to the one that they did uh, originally. They must have maybe done a couple of these. I don't know how many they did. Um, and it involves the car chase in Lethal Weapon 4, right? Lethal Weapon 4, there is an extraordinary car chase sequence down a freeway. Uh, Murtar is driving. Riggs is in the passenger seat. He has a fight with Jet Li on the back of a uh, on the back of a, a, a articulated lorry. It's got canvas down the side of it. You remember, there's all that sliding down the road, down the freeway, on bits of furniture being dragged behind. The th it's absolutely spectacular. There is a sequence in this where their vehicle leaves the freeway, jumps from the freeway through a building and out the other side and then rejoins the freeway again for the remaining part of that chase. That's the gag we're referring to and we'll have a little look at it right now. So I mean, here, let's have a look at this extraordinary moment. This is the two guys, they are in the cradle. Tony Snegoff is on the right. I don't know who the other guy is, uh, but I will find out. But on the right-hand side, that's him. They start to see the vehicle approaching, obviously at speed, and the other guy gives him a shove to go right. He then just darts left, then right, and the car is right on the window at that very point. That's when it bursts through. The guy on the left manages to get clear. Tony does not. He is hit by the car and thrown from the cradle. And the car comes out and lands in the catcher let's have a little look again i've tried to isolate them a bit more it arrives up at the window they can see what's going on the guy on the left will give tony a shove puts his arm out and pushes him as if to say go 
and the guy goes left. Tony then just takes a step left and goes right, and that is where the car is right behind him, and bang, it's got him there and throws him from the cradle. You just see him leaving. He's wired, so he is he's dangling there, and uh, by the looks of things, was in a very, very serious way. Um, why the timing happened i don't know uh you know was the car traveling much faster than uh, than it had been uh, in a rehearsal leading up to it i don't know but very clearly there is an issue now this is the shot they then use in the final movie the car comes into the building landing and then going through the building gets to the far side here and they see the car the other side they then push the gas a little more and then out the window the far side out and look the two guys are now hanging from the side of the cradle so it is a separate shot they've got a, a, another camera running as well I mean, you would you would you run a number of cameras running here but they have gone to the extent of doing it again the tires bursting upon landing but uh, look at the two comparisons that's the first shot that's tony and this is the second shot in the movie, and this is the other stuntman who's hanging on the side there. Unbelievable stuff, and nearly cost him his life. I mean, how close could you be? If there was a breakdown of communication, and we have to guess that there was, all right, they're wired. They are wired, you know? And the purpose of this is that they are a window-cleaning team, and they're cleaning the windows, and then they come. the car comes through, the middle of them, which I guess was the idea. Well, if you look in the final take, or the one used in the picture, they're already hanging on the side of that, giving the impression that they've reshot that, possibly with... I don't know whether Tony's involved in... I don't believe Tony would have been involved in the second one after the, the incident, the first, because they've clearly got him, you know. There isn't enough time for him to get from his starting position, if indeed that was his starting position, to where he needed to be. Was the car travelling far too quickly? Looks like it was really shifting. They've used slow-mo in the final edit, so there is a possibility that because of that they've been able to use it, but you just don't know. And consequently, that's where the problem lies. It's a moment of... Uh, real anxiety and uh, evidently didn't use it in the final take that particular shot as you can see filmed from a different angle focusing in on the two in the cradle and uh, well quite a shock when that thing come through the window I, I would imagine and into the biggest box rig catcher you've ever seen unbelievable um, you wouldn't want to start rebuilding that on a, reg on a regular basis um, all those people who have folded boxes for a living um, so there we go. That is a look at that. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that in-depth insight. And uh, maybe we will be able to get Tony on the show at a later date and he can discuss that and many other parts of his career. Some wonderful action he has been involved in. Next week, um, we take a little detour because we're going to look at Top Gear Top Gear uh, that, um, of course, started here many, many moons ago and has had its fair share of accidents. Um, consequently, the show is in the balance at the present time. Many people have said it's in the balance for quite some time since the three usual lads left and these current three, including one Freddie Flintoff, have taken over. It is with reference to Fred that we are looking at an incident that happened just before Christmas of last year and consequently has caused him some serious injuries and has brought the reputation of the show into question. We're looking at the stunts that have taken place throughout that period. Uh, Going to have a little look at those and uh, maybe we can find out why all of this happened in the first place. Uh, that will be next week, so don't forget to check out the Pod Dojo Network. They're responsible for all the uh, details as the podcast. They've got many other podcasts. Go and check them out. And until next time, bye for now.